So what we're about today is a little bit of sack and patch. This wall was poured out of a mixed design that didn't match the rest of the walls. I haven't been happy with it. It was a little rushed. The rocks were bigger. The fiber that was in there was long and it's just, I don't like it. And we're getting right down to the end of this project. Dustin is gonna be here next week to pour all this driveway area and the sidewalks around the back. And so this is pretty much my last chance to heal this up, make it look a lot better. So we're gonna show you how to make a 50-50 sand cement mixture, how to use concrete bonder to make it stick a little better, um, do some patching and then some dry sacking, which is something that works so good on small problems. It's not gonna make these walls match exactly, but it's gonna make them better. So these rock pockets been in here since the day I poured this three years ago. I also don't like how the color doesn't match, but I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do much about that. But I gotta fill these rock pockets, clean this up, and I'm gonna start with mixing up a mortar mix, essentially. It's 50% sand and 50% cement. I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of water that has some concrete bonder in it. And I'm just gonna fill the holes. I'm gonna wet the holes first, kind of wash them out, get a little moisture in there. So I'm gonna kind of brush these out a little bit. Got a little bit of adhesive back in there. Get rid of that goop right there. And I'm gonna kind of level out some of this right here too, I hope. Pour a little bit of this into my cement and sand mixture. So that's a little too stiff. Not much so. When it gets close, you can spit in it and it'll be too wet. Structural concrete is usually thought of as the concrete elements that stick up out of or above the ground. Now yes, footings are structural concrete, but walls and columns and decks and bridges and that sort of thing are the structural concrete that often needs to look nice as well as simply meeting the engineered requirements for strength. Fortunately, just like paint or stain on woodwork or drywall mud on sheetrock, there are ways to cover up the boo-boos and fix the mistakes and make it handsome. Okay, so I have sort of wet patched the rock pockets that were, you know, too big to sort of just take care of at a surface level. And it's got, you know, there was a little bonder in with the mortar with the sand and cement. By the way, it's 50% sand, 50% cement. And the cement around here that I used to do this is made up of about 60% white cement and 40% gray. I do that because it ends up pretty close to matching the color of the standard concrete service mix design. You know, different aggregate and different sand in different parts of the country make a different color concrete. And part of my original trouble here was that the mix design on that wall over there didn't mix, so I'm hoping to color it. But in the meantime, 50% sand, 50% cement, the cement is 60-40 white to gray. I mix it up with a little water, fill the worst of the rock pockets. I only put this in here about 10 minutes ago, so it's not hard yet. And now, I've mixed some concrete glue, some bonder, with some water, and I wet the substrate. Not a big area but this is the only part that's gonna be above the stairs. So I wet it. And I wait for a few minutes until most of the moisture is on the surface is gone and it's only wet back in the pinholes. And I have a chance here to use not one, but two face masks. I feel doubly safe. I feel doubly secure and twice as happy. The first face mask that I'm gonna use on my face is a respirator. It's not good to inhale this stuff if you can help it. Sometimes you can't help it. But I finally found a use for an N95 face mask. And I'll show you what that is once I'm ready to go. I'm mixing. I could do this with electricity, but I'm just doing it by hand. The beauty of this system is it's one mix whether you're going wet or dry. N95 to the rescue.
A little too wet down there, we're going to let it dry up. You just need some moisture back in the holes to hydrate this mix so it stays in there. But you can go over this as many times as you want and make it look a lot better and a nice consistent color. That wall looked so much better down on the end after I had patched it that I realized I've got to do the same thing for the, for the last 80 feet along the back here. And it is on the north side of the building. It's in the shade all winter. And sure enough, there's moss that is going to start. And it's going to be an ongoing problem for somebody. So I've got a pressure washer, and I'm going to try to clean this wall off down to where it's clean, or pretty clean. Then I'll take the grinder, knock down the little ridges and the little horn bumps, and then go ahead and just sack up this whole thing. It's going to take me a while. But it's a nice day, and so, you know, what better thing to do? I mean, if the painters can make the house look as good as they've made it look, the least I can do is shine this wall up a little bit. Now there are a lot of different plasters and epoxies and topping compounds that are commercially available today and different regions and different companies each have their favorites. But for my money and for small non-structural repairs, you can't beat the old-fashioned 50-50 mix of fine silica sand and cement. You don't need to be intimidated about trying this on a concrete mistake that you may have around your house or on concrete that just needs to be freshened up because the process is simple. Wash the substrate clean. Grind off anything that has to go. Thoroughly mix your ingredients while they're dry and then add water sparingly and trowel it in for a fill coat or leave it dry, wet the substrate and rub it into the holes for a dry sack finishing pass. Remember to come back later and lightly wet your work a few times to ensure hydration. And then repeat the whole process if necessary and if you want a progressively smoother and smoother finish. Well, I've got to say that now that I went ahead and bit the bullet and spent a few hours doing this little job, it brings up a point that I seem to have to relearn occasionally. I didn't really have to do this to this wall. The wall was doing its job just the way it was. And maybe I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for the camera. I don't know. But that doesn't matter now because it's done, and it needed to be done, and it feels great. And like my good friend George Smith drilled into me years ago, do it right and you are never sorry. Now don't worry, if you're fresh out of N95 masks around the house, a piece of burlap will work just fine for this. Thus the name, Sack and Patch. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work.